guys, we're gonna start this here. This is a very special day. Not just a day, but a very special week. So if you go back, you GPS this entire trip, right? From picking up in North Carolina to California, back to Houston. It is roughly 70 hours, which is one cycle of a logbook. Now granted, I know, I got pushed back a day because of the blizzard. And, but all said and done, from pick up to drop in basically a seven day, I mean, you could call it an eight day logbook, but seven days, we have hit a record number. Now I'm gonna go back and the only reason I'm making this video is because this is very special to me. I did not ever in my wildest dreams think that this was possible in the setup that I was in. I'm just out here running because I'm trying to make content. I'm just, it is what it is. It's nice making this extra money. Very special to me. And that's why I had to make this video. So, if you guys don't know, back in the day, I started doing some, you know, minor, small, you know, small trucking in, uh, back in 2018, just pulling campers and shit. Back then we were doing about a dollar a mile. And I was making plenty of money off of it. I was do, I was averaging about four grand a week at a dollar a mile. Um, now it's like now the rates are so much better. I could not live off of that um, now. But this load pays about a dollar seventy a mile. But I would call it about sixty five percent of expenses. So about sixty five percent of this is a keeper. But revenue wise, Bertha has brought in ten thousand. $300 in revenue this week. If it wasn't for the tip, it would have only been 10 grand, but I got a $300 tip in cash. IRS has entered the chat. But with that $300, we have made $10,300 in gross revenue this week. And let's throw everything aside and just call it for what it is. We keep about 65% of that in profits. So keep that in mind for the guys that, oh, what's the grow, what's the net number, this and that? Like, there you go. Just average about 65%, all right? I did not think that's possible, but this first load, everything just worked out properly because the first load paid $6,800 plus the $300 tip. And I'm gonna go over this load when we get here. If you guys didn't see the last video, I'm assuming, good God, I'm assuming this video is gonna get some okay views. I, I might be surprised because it is kind of a high number. Maybe a bunch of people click on it. So for those wondering, I'm going to go over the trailer and what we're pulling right now. Keep in mind, the trailer that I'm pulling is one of the best loads that you can get as a power only. Everyone's like, oh yeah, pull a camper, pull this, pull that. And it's like, we got a flatbed, a bumper pull 20 foot flatbed. That guy, you wild, my guy. And it's paying $1.70 a mile. I think it's paying just over $1.70 a mile. But that's crazy to me that it's paying as well as it is. I'm going to try to sneak my way in here. That dude started to back up. <laughs> so, so did he. She. That's, that's fucked. We're at a truck stop now. I'll show you guys this trailer. But here she is. This, what's this thing weigh? Like 3,000 pounds? 10,000 pound GBWR trailer, but it's really light. So it's about 3,500 pounds empty. Seven K axles. And it looks all right. But this thing pays literally $1.70 a mile to move it. It's like 3,200 bucks. Somebody fucked up there. That's some rigging shit right there. 3,200 bucks though, like to come back from California and I could still take something home. I'm not going to, I'm gonna get home or I'm gonna get uh, to Houston. I'm just gonna drive home. It's like 20 hours of deadhead, but I'm not an over the road driver. I literally just come out here to do these hot loads and I leave. So last trip we did about 11.5 which was ass, I didn't have a fifth wheel, I wasn't set up, I, I haven't done it in a while, so it took me 21 days to make 11.5, I fucked up, I know. Now, I'm out here, and in seven to eight days, we made 
So the goal is to be able to do this again, but get even more efficient next time. But we do got the fifth wheel if, if we need it and the gooseneck if we need it, which will be awesome if we can. Um, I'm probably gonna end up replacing these with pins. So if I ever need to uh, like use that, I can just pop the top off. That's how I do that. And I did that with my last setup too. It worked out really well, but um, we, uh, yeah, we got a bunch of time left. So I'm gonna try to knock out half of this today and then half of this tomorrow and try to drop on Saturday. They wanted it Monday. I'm gonna try to drop on Saturday. And then it'll literally be a Saturday to Saturday thing, which would be awesome. So if you GPS everything, it was a 70 hour trip. So I do get a bunch of other comments and shit on this specific topic and whatnot. And just do what works for you guys. Like the reason that I feel like I was able to get this good a rate, this trip was because I don't need to run. My insurance is cheap enough. I'm literally running 10 days this month and then going back home and working in the shop. But it's a good trip. Uh, the fuel there is expensive, expensive as hell. I only filled up the small tank and now I'm gonna find the next stop, hopefully in Arizona. And I'll fill up in Arizona and that should get me enough fuel to drop. So just to take this trailer, it, it's probably gonna cost me like 700 bucks in fuel. So it, it's really not bad at all. So genuine question, because there's a handicap spot here at Pilot, I'm out of fuel up, and uh, why? Why is there a handicap spot for truckers? Just a genuine question, not being a dick. Um, I was under the impression that you have to pass a DOT inspection to drive a semi. Is it for the passenger? Because I didn't know that you could be handicapped and drive a truck. Like that's a genuine question, because like, there's a spot up there. There is a guy in it. He just pulled into it a little bit ago, but I don't know. Um, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to run as much as I possibly can. I'm going to try my damnedest to drop tomorrow. Nobody was answering the phone, but I'm going to try to get my ass out of Arizona. Um, this route's a lot nicer. There are gyms. Everything's sore, though, because I literally went in and hit everything. Uh, we're going to get fuel. I'm only going to fill the small tank because as I go through, I know fuel's going to be cheaper in like New Mexico and Texas. I'm going to top the tank off when I get there, but I'm just going to run like, how many miles did I get? I'm going to do a fuel mileage test as well, but we got 370 miles to that tank and still have a quarter tank. So realistically, we're not far off that 500 mile mark on this tank and this trailer's just been awesome. So I'm going to get to work. We're going to get out of here, do my pre-trip, all the fun stuff, and let's get moving. This pump here at Pilot is a piece of shit, but 435 for diesel. And uh, yeah, I had to do this trick because if you even click it on one, it just keeps clicking off. So it's going to make it really hard to get an accurate mileage, but I'm going to try. I'm going to do my damnedest. Um, might just run it there and then do a quick top off and see what we get. All right, we got about 13.5 miles per gallon. So, eh, it's not, it's not great, but it's not hateful either. Like that's what I'm getting empty. So I just got my uh, last fuel fill up for this load, and we are going now to run, and we're gonna drop off tomorrow. I got some strings pulled. We're gonna drop tomorrow, and should be good. I went and got food, so we are good to just drive the rest of this remaining trip. Uh, fuel here was like 381, not the greatest, but definitely better than 450 and 460 and shit. So let's get there and yeah, follow along with this bullshit. You know you're in New Mexico when, that's one, and I think there's one up ahead too because I passed him and then I stopped and I got fuel. I think there's one right up there as well. Yep. I remember that. Oh yes, New Mexico, I-10. Look at that. Not even a small vehicle in the damn, in, in the back of the box truck. Like that was a Ram 1500, a fourth generation Ram 1500. Is that legal down here? I mean, I don't care if it's not. More power to them, but I just, like, what's the legalities on that? Genuinely curious. All right, so we've been moving for about two hours and 40 minutes, 
and we have done 351 miles. The speed limit out here in Texas is like 80 mile an hour, so I have no time to fuck around. The GPS says I'll be there at 7.30 in the morning. I have to be there before noon, they said in between 8 and 12. Otherwise, I can't drop till Monday. So I have been just leaving the cruise control at 80 mile an hour, 81 to 82, and just boogieing. And that is the speed limit, so I passed quite a few cops. It's kind of neat having an 80 mile an hour speed limit, but just trying to get there. The second I hit the Texas state line, it was 11 hours on the dot. I think, uh, I think it was a little bit more. It was a little bit more than 11 hours to get to Houston, which is nuts. Like, Texas is just fucking enormous. Also, everybody, all these douchebags, like this guy, fucking high beams. I don't know what, what it is, but like I noticed in the past couple years, everybody likes to drive with their brights on. And if you do that, you deserve to get throat punched. It just is what it is. Stop using your brights on the damn highway when people are coming at you. I love these reverse lights because I blind the fuck out of anybody behind me that has them on. They shut them off real quick. All right, while we're filling up, I'm gonna do one quick check over, make sure everything's good because we've been moving pretty good. All right, all the tires are good. Yeah, it's just a light trailer. You know what's funny? I've never actually checked these tail lights. I know I should have but I just kind of assumed they work when I've passed multiple cops. Yeah, they all work, cool. I was concerned by that, but we're gonna drop tomorrow. We got like six hours and 20 minutes left. Everything's good. Just need to finish. This should be, uh, I don't know. I don't know if this will be my last fill up. We got 371, so I'll let you know. All right, so next day, we're about 50 minutes from dropping this thing. And then we are headed home. I did take a little bit of a nap last night, but she's doing all right. Um, I did have my first encounter with Bertha last night. The uh, ABS light kept flashing and it was really annoying because it would like bing and then turn off and then bing and then turn off. It just kept ding, ding, and it just pissed me off. So I read the code, the rear ABS sensor. I just unplugged it for now. I'll uh, take care of it when I get home. But other than that, Perth has been cruising like 78 to 85 mile an hour the entire trip. This load is such an easy load, but I am, I'm gonna personal conveyance all the way home tomorrow. It's like a 20 hour drive. I'd like to be home by tomorrow night, Easter Sunday. So let's uh, get on the road. I got about 50 minutes. Got our paper printed. So let's get out there. Check out this, where does it say it? Right, right there, total weight, 22,000 pounds. Look at the rate. We're running it for about 32, but the rate on this thing is $3,885. And that shows you what brokers are making on some of this stuff. Uh, they tried to offer it to us for 27. We got them up to 32. You'd be surprised how much your brokers are charging. All right, so we have a dilemma. I got here. They told me to get here in between 8 and 12. It is 10.30 in the morning. And all of the gates are closed. No one's out there. I do see the steel, so I know I'm in the right place. I checked the address. Everything's good. Um, so I need to figure that out. But I'll run over that grass and, like, I, I don't give a shit. I'm going to drop that trailer. So I'm, one way or another, I'm dropping this trailer. It's not like it's a big trailer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call someone. I'll, oh, give me a minute. All right, we have good news. And I'm going to get out to talk because, like, it's beautiful out here down in Texas. It is Houston, so it's kind of, like, shitty. But they're closed, so the broker actually isn't too far up the road. Mind you, I, this dude is awesome. I Very rarely will I say that about a broker, but this dude has gone above and beyond and literally made sure that I can drop this thing today. Like, he's probably a half hour away, and he's coming to meet me here unlock the gate, drop the trailer off so I can go home. And I'm gonna take personal conveyance because I'm literally just in a 9,000 pound GVWR pickup truck. I can drive up empty and do whatever the fuck I want at this point because I am pretty much free. I'm not committed to anything. The trip was under eight days for this month. Um, 
And yeah, we're just gonna personal conveyance back home. It's like a 21 hour trip. Uh, I don't think you can do that in a semi and any vehicle over 10,000 pounds, but I am 9,000 pounds GVWR. So when we get back home, we got a bunch of maintenance for Bertha. We got to do a bunch of stuff for Dakota. The shop is full and I got to get like, I, I cannot come out here and do another one of these runs for at least three to four weeks. So just keep that in mind, bear with me on the shop stuff. I need to get the lights ordered, but shop lighting, motorcycle parts. We got new flooring for the house coming. Um, they're redoing our floor. I think that was like 2,500 bucks. Um, we got the Dakota needs a bunch of work. We just got that to go through inspection. So we got like brakes, um, ball joints, um, bunch of shit we got to do to it. I got to do U joints on the drive shaft. Just we drove that truck a lot. I think we put like 15,000 some miles on it this year, 15, 20,000 miles. Wife's been driving the shit out of it. We're going to do a new master cylinder. Um, but other than that, I am pretty much going to close this video out. This is my, this is my load. $3,200. Dude, I'm, I'm proud of this one. Like, and this broker's been fucking awesome to be able to help me out like that. Cause he's like, yeah, you can't drop till Monday. And then I was like, well, I kind of want to be home Sunday for Easter and shit. And he's like, all right, we'll make it happen. So he did. Cause, and then he, he gave me a different address, which is this address, but kind of had me going. Cause there's one gate down there. There's a second gate down there. And then it says, and they're both closed, and then it says, oh, the address is up here because there's a sign. And then I come here and it's closed. So, waiting on him. I'm not going to film anything after that. Appreciate you guys for sticking around. Let me know what you guys think about this, seriously, because I don't think I've ever seen, and I've never done it personally, I've never seen a, a Power Only Hotshot do over 10000 in revenue in a week. I see freight guys doing it. I don't ever see someone doing it in with with this so and like i said if you want the cost breakdown it's pretty much 65 percent of whatever i make i get to keep so ten thousand let's just say sixty five hundred bucks in profit in a week that is very 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 good so appreciate you guys see you in the next video oh and also keep in mind my record week before this um was the last time i was out we made seventy one hundred dollars on the first week and then the only other time that I made anywhere close to that, I think I made $5,600 back in like 2019 was like my peak week. So it's always just been four grand. So, all right, now we're going to end it. See you guys.